What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. You can find my written work and my running back rankings at NoahMoreParties.com. And today I want to talk about one of the more interesting players, I think, in the player pool in both Dynasty and Redraft uh, this season, and that is Alexander Madison. Let's get into it. <laughs> First of all, Alexander Madison, for the first time, is going to be, presumably, the clear lead back, starting running back on an NFL team at the outset of an NFL season, presumably for the entire season this year with the Vikings. And because of that, he's currently being drafted, at least at the time of this recording, which is... I'm filming this before I leave for Yellowstone. Hopefully nobody involved tears an ACL in the meantime. But yeah, currently, as of the date of this recording, uh, Alexander Madison is currently being drafted as the RB19 on underdog, just ahead of guys like Miles Sanders, Damian Pierce, Cam Akers. And in Dynasty, according to Keep Trade Cut, he's currently being valued as the RB20, ahead of guys like Zach Charbonnet, Devon A-Chain, Kendra Miller in this rookie class, and productive veterans like Aaron Jones and Joe Mixon. I'm here to save you from yourselves, though. I, I don't want you drafting... Alexander Madison at RB19, RB20 in redraft or in dynasty, maybe especially in dynasty, but either or. And I have three reasons to be avoiding Alexander Madison in your fantasy drafts this offseason. Number one is that he's been actively bad in the past two seasons. Uh, in five career games, we know, you know, in, in six starts, what like he's he's been productive when he gets work. Uh, when Dalvin Cook has been out, there's been five career games in which Alexander Madison has played at least 50% of the snaps. In those games, he's averaged 23.7 PPR points per game, which is obviously awesome. Those are like Christian McCaffrey level numbers. If we could get 23.7 points per game out of any running back, you know, in his starts on average, we would absolutely love that. But there's a difference between filling in here and there in spot duty for an injured starter a couple times a season and playing well and producing well under the burden of your own workhorse volume over the course of the entire season. Those are those are different things. We're going to get to how Madison might be affected by an increase in volume in uh, my next point, but things don't look good for him, even if he's completely unaffected from an efficiency standpoint with it, you know, by an increase in volume. From 2019 to 2020, in his first two years in the league, you know, after coming out of Boise State, I... I live in Boise. Uh, this isn't an, an Alexander Madison hate piece, but it, his first few years in the league, Alexander Madison was averaging 4.57 yards per carry. That's in the 70th percentile. That's good. His box adjusted efficiency rating, which compares his efficiency on a per carry basis to the per carry efficiency of the collective other guys in the offense that he's playing in um, and adjust things for the kinds of box counts he's seeing. So it's contextualized with the offense environment you're in, um, offensive line play, the kinds of situations that you're carrying the ball in in terms of defensive fronts and things like that. It's a more contextualized version sort of of yards per carry that tells you like, given all the context, how good has this guy been on a per carry basis? And even in an offense that's been good, had good offensive lines, good offenses, and where Dalvin Cook, one of the best running backs in the league, has been the, the main running back to compete with in that offense, Alexander Madison's box-adjusted efficiency rating through two seasons in his career was 101%, which indicates that he's slightly more efficient than the collective other guys in his offense. Um, that's a 50th percentile mark right at league average, but that that's pretty impressive considering the context, um, especially of Dalvin Cook being the main competition in that backfield. He wasn't very, you know, consistent on a per carry basis. Relative success rate, which is the same thing as box adjusted efficiency rating, but it's a rate stat instead of an average and indicates like how often are you creating positive outcomes on your carries given the box counts that you're seeing, blah, blah, blah. That was in the 42nd percentile, so a little bit worse, but his rushing yards over expected per attempt in his first two seasons in the league was 0.4. So gaining almost a half yard more over expected based on the situational factors on his carries then would be expected. Um, that's pretty good. That's in the 81st percentile. So he was an actively good player for his first few seasons in the league. The last two seasons in 2021 and 2022, he has fallen off really hard. He's averaged 3.72 yards per carry. Dropped, what is that, like point, that's almost a, an entire yard per carry. Let me do the math there. 
I don't know. <laughs> That's less than 4.7 or 4.57. It's in the 30th percentile. 3.72 is very bad. His box adjusted efficiency rating has dropped even as Dalvin Cook has aged and really not played as well in the last couple years as he did like in his in the real meat of his prime. Alexander Madison's box adjusted efficiency rating in the last two seasons has been 82%, which means that the average carry for Madison, given all those situational factors we talked about, has been worth 18% less than the average carry for a non-Madison running back in Minnesota during that time. That's a 22nd percentile number. Uh, he got a little bit better in relative success rate, 59th percentile. Um, basically, he's become like a somewhat reliable plotter on, on a down-to-down -down basis. Like, he's no longer offering any value from, like, an efficiency standpoint. His rushing yards over expected is well in the negatives. Negative 0.67, that's a 23rd percentile mark. He's producing you know, positive outcomes on a, on a relatively decent basis overall, but offering no juice on his carries. He just, he just hasn't been good. He has not been good from a per carry, you know, on a per carry basis at all. He finished bottom nine in yards per carry among RB2s across the league last season. So not RB2s in fantasy, but guys who finished second on their team in carries, primary backups. We have this idea of Madison as like a, a, you know, kind of underutilized good player because he's always good in fantasy when Cook goes down. So we, we view him as like a quality runner. He absolutely has not been that recently. Bottom 10, bottom nine in yards per carry among backup running backs last year. And the 3.72 yards per carry that he's averaged over the course of the last two seasons combined would have ranked 31st in the NFL among lead backs last season. Brian Robinson had 3.88. He was 28th in the league. Najee Harris averaged 3.83 at 29. Zeke was 30th at 3.74. Madison would have ranked right below Zeke at 3.72. The only guys he would have been more efficient than are Leonard Fournette and Michael Carter among lead runners last season. And it's not like it hasn't been his fault. Like, Cook averaged 4.44 yards per carry last season way more than what Alexander Madison was averaging. The Vikings had the fourth-ranked run-blocking offensive line according to PFF's grading system last year. They were an elite run-blocking group that saw an aging running back who, to be fair, is, like, really good and easily better than Madison. But the point is, like, this wasn't a situation where, like, nobody could succeed and Madison was just, like, being stifled by bad circumstances. These were good circumstances. Another running back was efficient. The offensive line was great. And the box counts that he was seeing, he saw an average of 6.94 defenders in the box on his carries last season. That, that's in the 44th percentile. Like, that's below average in in a good way, you want to be seeing light boxes, but the fact that he was inefficient while seeing light boxes is, is bad. Like everything was set up for him to succeed. Light volume. Uh, you know, he's, he's playing fresh most of the time. Good run blocking offensive line, advantageous circumstances in terms of defensive attention paid to him when he's carrying the ball. And he was very inefficient anyway. And it's been two years since Alexander Madison was even an average NFL running back on like a per carry basis as a rusher. So that there's point number one. He's been actively bad in the last two seasons. Point number two is that late career volume increases have been detrimental to running back efficiency in recent history. Let me explain what I mean. For the purposes of a Tony Pollard article that I wrote, uh, what, like last month at this point, um, over at nomoreparties.com, there have been 18 running backs since the year 2000 who had their first season of 15 plus touches per game at least four seasons into their NFL career. So through their first four years, they didn't see, you know, a ton of volume. Um, and then at some point beyond their first four years in the league, for the first time, they started seeing heavy volume, which I defined as at least 15 touches per game. Alexander Madison seems like he's going to be one of those guys this season. Uh, he hasn't seen 15 touches per game so far in his NFL career. It seems like he could do that this season. And of those 18 guys, like a lot of those guys are studs, uh, like talented players. Uh, Jamal Anderson from those old Falcons teams. Austin Eckler, uh, Justin Forsett, Charlie Garner, Chris Ivory, Lamont Jordan, Jonathan Stewart, Chester Taylor, Michael Turner. These guys, it, this is not just a list exclusively made up of like, dudes who were barely on rosters through three years or th four years and then like got thrust into volume these are a lot of them that, that's like that's half the group that i named right there that are like legitimately talented quality football players so so that's what our sample is made up of is, is a lot of good players here 
But the percentage of those guys who from before they had a big volume increase to the season in which they experienced the volume increase, how many of them saw their yards per carry average decrease from before and after those two points? Two thirds of them, 67% of them saw their yards per carry drop from before they had a lot of volume to when they had a lot of volume. And the average change in yards per carry for those 18 players was minus 0.19 yards per carry. So they dropped about a fifth of a yard in per carry average from before they got a bunch of volume to when they got a bunch of volume. Using Madison's to date career in yards per carry, which is uh, I believe like 4.1 something, the standard drop among these players, 0.19 yards per carry, would result in him averaging 3.94 yards per carry in 2023 under a substantial volume increase. That would have ranked 26th among lead backs last season, near the bottom of the league. If we use Madison's 2021 and 2022 yards per carry, which you remember is 3.72, and if then he drops another 0.19, He'd be averaging 3.53 yards per carry, which would have ranked 31st among lead backs in 2022, ahead of only Michael Carter and less efficient than Leonard Fournette, who is currently a free agent and is completely washed. Like, that's the kind of outcome we're looking at here, like in the realm of possibility for Alexander Madison in 2023. Either way, whether we want to use his career yards per carry as a starting point or his most recent seasons of poor yards per carry as a starting point, the standard decrease for these players who see a substantial increase in volume late in their careers, like Alexander Madison seems like he's going to experience in 2023, either way, we can expect him to be one of the least efficient, one of the worst RB1s in the entire league this season. Which brings me to my third point. Given that Madison hasn't been good lately, in either of the last two years, and given that he probably won't be good going forward, considering the history of running backs stepping into more volume like he seems to be, there's a good chance that he doesn't actually receive enough volume to make good on his current ADP right around the top 20 running backs in fantasy, whether you're talking about dynasty or redraft. Th the play here with Alexander Madison is, well, he's been good in fantasy before uh, when Dalvin Cook goes down, and the Vikings are a good team, and he's stepping into volume. I won't argue that the Vikings are a bad team. I think they're a good team. Uh, but I will argue that Alexander Madison is actually not good. And I will also argue that he might not actually receive enough volume because he hasn't been good. In the last 15 years, there have been 68 running backs to receive 200 or more carries in a season while also averaging less than four yards per carry in that season. 200 yards per carry is a fairly uh, arbitrary cutoff but in my mind, it kind of represents legitimate lead back type volume that equates to what, like 12 carries per game, you know, sprinkle in a few receptions here and there, maybe a couple more, a couple more carries. We're around the 15 touches per game threshold that we talked about earlier, but there have been 68 running backs in the last 15 years who got that kind of volume while also being, you know, particularly inefficient in those seasons. 47 of those seasons came from guys who had already at some point in their career posted a 1,000-yard rushing season in the NFL. These are guys that had a strong history of production and were therefore kind of like grandfathered into volume. You can think of this in, in the same way that like, you know, a quarterback who, you know, has been a starter for three years, has been, you know, maybe a Pro Bowl level guy, is a legitimate starting quarterback in the NFL, and then has a season where he like throws a bunch of picks. They're not just going to bench him necessarily in week five and stop playing him because he has, you know, one bad season or one bad start to a season. He's earned the benefit of the doubt through a history of production in the same way that these running backs, these 47 guys who'd previously ran for a thousand yards in the NFL have proven themselves as like legit NFL players. Even if they're inefficient for like a season at a time, they're not necessarily just going to get like benched or taken off the field they might still get high volume because they've proven to deserve it in the past. So those 47 guys aren't really solid precedent for a guy like Madison. Nine other of these 68 guys were either day one rookies or day two rookies with obviously no history of you know production at the NFL level, but they had sunk cost and patience insulating their opportunity. That's guys like Le'Veon Bell, Matt Forte, David Montgomery, Najee Harris, uh, Leonard Fournette, Trent Richardson, Sony Michelle. These were inefficient, rookie running backs getting a lot of volume, but with day one or day two capital, 
strong investment from their teams and, you know, patience to develop a young player, allow him to kind of learn on the go in his first crack at a starting job, that kind of thing will insulate your opportunity and allow you to continue playing, continue getting volume, even if you're not like playing great during that season. Three of these other guys were day three rookies who were basically just like thrust into volume randomly. Uh, Andre Williams, Zach Stacy, Vic Ballard weren't good, didn't do much, any of them afterwards. They just kind of like fell into volume first season at a time. Somewhat similar, I guess, to Alexander Madison, but they were all rookies. Um, they hadn't had a history of production or of like poor play in the NFL. It was just kind of like random circumstances. They ended up with a lot of volume in year one. Six of these other guys also had a history of production by either flirting with 1,000 rushing yards in a single season or by having like proven to be dual threat, you know, like quality dual threat players prior to this like inefficient season of high volume. That's Carlos Hyde, Kevin Smith, James Conner, Alvin Kamara, Andre Ellington, Marion Barber. And so that history of production, even if it didn't come in the form of like a 1000 yard rushing season, similar to the guys with 1000 yard seasons from prior, um, from prior years, grandfathered these guys into volume. If you're Alvin Kamara, you don't have a 1000 rushing yard season, but you've proven to be like an elite dual threat, you know, receiver rusher, even if you have a couple, you know, games or a season's worth of inefficiency, you're not just going to get benched. You can get high volume anyway, because you've proven to deserve it through your play in the past. So, so those are, those are all the guys who their situations aren't really like Alexander Madison's. They'd either proven it before, or they were rookies who were mostly like insulated in their opportunity by draft capital and, you know, things like that. So that just leaves two guys out of these 68 running backs who are kind of like Madison in the way that their, you know, kind of seasons materialized. The first one there is Leron McLean, who is a fullback with eight career carries entering his high volume season, whatever. The other guy is Michael Bush, who had been averaging 4.43 yards per carry in his three seasons prior to receiving a bunch of volume, I think with the Raiders, but that, but that's it. Michael Bush didn't have a strong history of production. He was a solid backup running back, just like Alexander Madison was early on in his career, stepped into volume, Average less than four yards per carry. Leron McLean barely played. I think it was his second season when he stepped into volume, but was also inefficient under heavy bump. But those are the only two guys in the last 15 years whose teams stuck with them for an entire season, stuck with them enough over an entire season for them to get 200 or more carries while they averaged less than four yards per carry without draft capital or proven production, keeping them in their high volume roles. It just doesn't happen very often. Teams do not feed running backs who don't deserve their volume based on their on-field play without having some reason to actually believe in them, whether that's a history of production or like draft capital spent on them and, you know, therefore like sunk cost that makes you invested in their actually receiving opportunity. There's not much reason to believe that Alexander Madison will like suddenly be a more effective player as a lead back than he has been as a handcuff in recent years. And if he's not a more effective player, I don't see much reason to believe that the Vikings would just feed one of the worst starting running backs in the league enough carries to deliver on an RB19 ADP. Given all that, I would much rather bet on good players on bad teams like Cam Akers, Miles Sanders, and Damian Pierce, guys who are all going after Alexander Madison on underdog right now. I'd rather bet on those guys than hope that like a bad player in Alexander Madison can get carried to fantasy points by a good situation over the course of an entire season despite playing badly. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, catch me on... I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't predict the future this far out. Catch me on my next video. It'll be on Wednesday. Peace.